Really, does anybody else's desk area look like that? So I know I've talked about this before that my desk looks the way it does because I'm never at it except for lunch really when I'm shooting these videos. I'm never really at my desk. I teach during the day. As a teacher I don't feel like you should be sitting behind a desk because there's not time and if, if there is then I don't know what you're doing but I don't have time to sit behind my desk. I'm out with my kids unless I'm working with a, a, a group which <laughs> you can see isn't very possible right now but uh, I'm out with my kids around the classroom and that's why my desk looks like this but I, I feel like I need to admit that I do have a problem with this, so any tips and tricks as to how to organize all the paperwork, because I feel like there's so much paper that comes into school now, and I try not to use it all, I recycle a lot, because um, I, don't, I don't like worksheets, and you know that about me, but uh, any tips and ideas that you have to solve this mess uh, are, are very much appreciated. Thanks. Alright, so I got a Facebook message from someone last week, and I'm sorry if you sent me a message or an email and I didn't get back to it yet. That was a really cool part about being on a cruise, was we were completely disconnected from Wi-Fi and social media and social network and all that. And I know I use it a lot, I love using it for things like this to share with all of you, but not having it for a week made me realize how much I really use it and how much I didn't miss it. I loved not being connected. And I loved spending time with my family and my kids and just enjoying life and experiencing so much. So that's beside the point. But the Facebook message that somebody sent me asked or said something along the lines, of, and I don't remember all of them because I got a lot of messages, but so I'm sorry, I will get back to all of you. Something along the lines of, hey Adam, and a few weeks ago, in a vlog a few weeks ago, you mentioned, and it got talking about how I mentioned that we're going to get this channel back to what it used to be, back to where it was you know, smart board ideas and tips and tricks and technology and, and just little quick tips for all of you teachers. So today I had an idea which we're going to talk about pretty soon that I thought was a great quick tip. So we did Monday shout outs yesterday and we're kind of getting back in the swing of that. Today I'm going to do what we call quick tip Tuesdays. How about that? I didn't make a fancy little intro for it yet either because it's late night. So we'll call that quick tip Tuesdays. Here's a quick tip for all of you teachers. Quick tip Tuesdays. Check out this idea. Okay, so every once in a while I get these ideas that I that just come to me and I'm like, yeah, why didn't I think of this sooner? Because it's one of those ideas where I think to myself, like, man, Adam, you're a genius. And I'm really not. But it's one of those ideas that, that I just thought of on the spot and it worked. And here is an example of one of those ideas. Okay, so as you've heard me mention before, I am not a fan of curriculum. I don't like the curriculum that we use in my classroom all the time. Now I do use bits and pieces of, of the curriculum for the purpose of some of it I like, but I, I, I tend to do my own thing. Now I'm still teaching to the standards and I still take the standards what I have to teach these kids and, and I turn it into my own thing, which I think all the great teachers do. If you're stuck to those manuals as Bibles, then uh, you need to rethink about it, I think. That's my opinion and you can agree with that or not. So math is one of those things that I absolutely hate using the curriculum for. And that's not a word I use very often because I think hate is a strong word, but I hate using our curriculum because math is more than a worksheet. I think that's a hashtag too. Math is more than a worksheet. Um, math is done in so many different ways that the kids learn better than sitting and writing. So much of what our math curriculum has become is writing. It's a writing, handwriting test than it is actually figuring out the problem and coloring and things like that. And that's not math to me. So I had this idea today, and this was one of those things, like I said, just a split second idea. It's probably been done before, so I'm not going to claim it as an original idea, because it's a great idea for what it worked for, but it's really not that original, I guess. But we're talking about spring, we're talking about ways to make groups more than 10 and break them down into 10 frames and things like that. And my kids are sick and tired of using 10 frames. We use them all the time. So I thought, how can I tie in spring? And how can I tie in 10 frames and how can I mesh them together to make a fun idea that the kids want to do? So today we did something that we started calling Math Crafts. Yay! And what I did is I used a die cut and I cut out these little uh, flowers and I ripped 
the tulip part off the top of the flower. So all I have left are these things that you're seeing on the screen right now, these little stems. And then I took a sheet of construction paper and I wrote across the bottom of a page and I copied on the construction paper, blank plus blank equals blank. And then I gave the kids that construction paper that you can see and the flat, the, blah, 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 the uh, stems that you can see in the picture. And uh, I had them glue the stems down and then we drew numbers. They all drew a number between 11 and 20. And whatever number they drew, they had to write on the last line of their page, as you can see in this little guy's paper right here. Uh, and then we used ink and then a stamp that many petals or that many berries, whatever they wanted to call them, onto their flower or their plant. So we talked about spring and things that grow in the spring, and they all came up with different ideas. Some said they looked like trees, some they said they looked like bushes, some said they looked like blueberry bushes or plants. And then they had to use their counting skills to take their whole number that we had and break it down into a group of 10 and some more. So you can see through these pictures that uh, they got it. I had them all stand up in front of the class and explain blank plus blank equals blank. And they talked about how they made their groups to make the whole number. So that right there, like I said, is one of those ideas where I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of this sooner and why didn't I have it for many lessons to share and do it multiple times because they absolutely loved it. So I'm actually going to throw this into a station with some more ideas because they loved it. So I'm going to let them roll dice and then I have to put that as their whole number and show me different ways to make it using fingerprints and ink. And uh, again, they're doing math through something like art. So anytime you hear someone say, man, I don't have time to do crafts or I don't have time to do this, there's an idea. You know, make time in your day to throw a craft into whatever you're doing. Whether it's a directed art lesson or something to go along with a story or like in this case, a math lesson. So there's a tip for this week from me. Like I said, I, I love using quick little tips like that. And, and when it comes to me, it comes to me last minute, so I don't always have the time to create a fancy, fancy thing to make it look really cool, but it doesn't matter. If the kids love it, and they're enjoying it, and they're learning, and they're having fun, and all those things combined, then run with it in your classroom and uh, and do it. And the kids loved it. So there's an idea for you. Using uh, decomposing numbers or composing numbers to make new numbers uh, with groups of 10 and whatnot, turn it into a spring lesson using flowers. If you have another idea for this, share it down below and uh, maybe a way to expand on it or something else. But uh, there you go, there's a tip for you this week, an easy spring math activity. Like I said, simple. It's probably been done a million times, but it came to me today. I loved it, my kids loved it. Use it. <laughs>